Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo and I have another video for you guys. I'm going to be talking today about Magneto. Eric Lencher, the master of magnetism. He is the greatest technical villain of all time. And it's debatable, but it is um, one of the... I think probably the most agreed upon of all non-objective truths. He is not really a villain, even though he is an enemy to the X-Men, he is also a friend. He is a mutant, he is the best friend of Professor Charles Xavier. When I'm doing my fan casting today, I want to make sure that the people that I'm choosing are not just great at being evil, but understanding that Magneto himself isn't evil, he's trying to make the world a better place but he's trying to make the world a better place for his people. It's a complex character, it's very complex, and I picked actors based on that premise. So I wanted to jump ahead and just get started right here. I'm not gonna waste too much time because I've got about five main picks for this role, but I've got a few bonuses in here as well. So I wanted to just jump right in. Let's not waste a lot of time, ready? Let's go. So here we have Magneto, we all know who he is. I wanted to point out a couple of things uh, he was played by Michael Fassbender in the recent X-Men iterations. Previously, Ian McKellen um, played him as a much older version. I think it's really important that I declare the age range, not so much the height. The height doesn't truly matter, but Magneto should be someone of a strong appearance, a strong leadership, not necessarily as much so as Cyclops, but he does need to be somebody that visually can represent that strength even if it's just in his face and acting. And so let's let's just jump right ahead. First up on my list, Sean Bean. Sean Bean is 59 years of age. He is 5 foot 10, and a lot of the picks on my list are 5'10". He's got a massive resume, and <laughs> in almost everything he plays, he's known for dying. Well, I intend to change that. If he's gonna be playing Magneto, one thing that most people are aware of with Magneto is that he doesn't really die. He has in certain iterations, but Magneto is one of the greatest villains to ever be written. And in my rendition, he's not going down. You might be able to thwart his plans and that's what the X-Men will have to seek to do. But just how there's a mutual respect for Charles Xavier, there's also a mutual respect, not only for the person who is Eric Lencher, but the power that is Magneto. And I think Sean Bean can truly capture the strength and the leadership. I think that he would be a great pick for the role of Eric Lencher, being able to lend himself to the sweeter nature, but also to the aggressive, uh, more power hungry version. If you guys saw Lord of the Rings, you saw him wrestle with um, his selfish nature against the temptation of the ring. And he eventually came back to the side of good and sacrificed himself. Um, I loved him in Lord of the Rings. He's also in Game of Thrones. He's also played in um, Sharp, 007 Goldeneye. He's been in Troy, Equilibrium, The Martian. He was in National Treasure. He typically plays a lot of a lot of either bad guys or situational bad guys, where he plays like an FBI agent or something. He ends up usually dying, but not on my watch, <laughs> not in my X-Men. So Sean Bean is my first pick for that. Let's go ahead and just take a look. Some people have done some side-by-side -side comparisons of art pieces. Not a lot of actual you know, fan art done for this, this actor in this role, but a lot of people have seen that the, the ability, the range that this guy carries is similar to the range that would be required to play Magneto. That's one of the reasons why I have selected him in this role, but also why a couple other people out there have started to realize, yeah, I think Sean Bean would be great in this role as Magneto. So that is my first pick. Next up is Viggo Mortensen. So again, another Lord of the Rings pick. If you guys aren't familiar with Viggo Mortensen, he is Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. From all three, he was one of the shining aspects of that film and film trilogy. He's also been in films like Green Book, Captain Fantastic. He's been in The Road. He's been in Hidalgo, History of Violence, A Witness. He's been in A Perfect Murder. He's been in a lot, a lot of films, but he's most well known for his role in Lord of the Rings as Aragorn because he crushed it. Now, He's 60 years old. This is right in the pocket of the age range that I would have for Magneto because it has to be very close to the picks that I have for Professor X. They are good friends, close friends, close in age, colleagues, um, and that would mean that they would have to be somewhere close to the same age range. Um, let's take a look. I am not the only person who has cast Viggo Mortensen for the role of Magneto. 
Um, he has that that intensity, that ferocity. He also has the ability to use these subtle changes in his in his facial expressions to add power to the words that he speaks. When he played King Aragorn, um, it was it was so moving. It's so it's so powerful. And to be someone that can rally mutants um, to rise up against humanity and to try to subdue them, to proclaim their rights as homo superior. He has to have that commanding presence and he cert and Viggo Mortensen certainly does. Incredibly talented actor, and I think he would look fantastic in the helmet. Um, yeah, I think he, he would just be great for that. So just like many of the picks on my list, I picked them all for basically close to the same reasons. Not all the same reason, but close. And I think he would be great in that role. So that that's basically that. Let me just recap that. So Sean Bean is five foot ten, uh, fifty nine years old. Viggo Mortensen is five eleven, one inch taller, and sixty years old, one year older. So they're very close. The actors that I've chosen so far. So that's number two. Next up on the list, Jim Caviezel. So if you guys aren't already familiar, he is he played Jesus Christ. He's known for playing Jesus Christ in The Passion of the Christ. And uh, he's also in Person of Interest, The Count of Monte Cristo. He's been in quite a few movies, um, Outlander, The Red Line, Frequency, Deja Vu, a lot of biblical films, I Am David, Transit, The Prisoner. But yeah, um, those are pretty much a lot of the roles that he's been in. But even just being in Person of Interest, Count of Monte Cristo, Passion of the Christ, fantastic actor. I mean, I, I've always respected him as an actor ever since I saw him in 2004 um, play Jesus. Uh, which was, it was incredibly powerful. Like if you haven't seen that movie, please see that movie. It's just beautiful. And the way that he portrays the pain and the suffering of the of the killing of, of the Christ, man, like it's, it's just, it's hard to watch. It really is. It turns your stomach. It's so realistic. And I think that for him to be able to convey that level of emotion, um, that level of um, commitment to a cause, that, that I think would translate very nicely, again, into uh, Magneto and him, him having suffered through the Holocaust, him having suffered uh, through the persecution of mutants um, and just saying no more, you know? So at 50 years old, he is almost 10 years younger than the other picks. But if, you know, I'm gonna jump ahead and show you guys some of these comparisons. A lot of people have cast him in this role as well. He has graying hair and the five o'clock shadow that he typically always has. It, it lends itself to give him a little bit more of an aged look. He doesn't look 50. I mean, in his face, he looks like he could be anywhere from 45 to 55 in that in that bracket. But that's that's really nice because then you could just put a wig on him or have him grow out his hair, gray it a little bit more. He could play a role that is a little bit older. He has that ability. I want you guys to let me know down below if you think this is a little outside the box, if you guys think that this is right in the pocket. Not a ton of people casting him, but other people have in fact gone out of their way to make these fan castings and include him in their lists, but not a lot here on a Google search. So let me know what you think. Next up on the list, number four, Liam Neeson. Now this one has a lot more fan art. He is 66 years old, which puts him at the second oldest slot on my list. Second oldest, 66 years old, second oldest on my list. He's six foot four. So more than anybody else on this list, he has the greatest stature. He would look the most physically imposing and embody that physical leadership, that on-camera leadership that I think many of these other actors do not carry. Jim Caviezel is six foot two and I think that puts him tied for the next tallest on my list. You guys already know Liam Neeson's work. He was in Taken, The Commuter, Unknown, um, Nonstop, The Grey. He was in Taken 2 and 3. He was Qui-Gon Jinn in Star Wars. He plays a lot of like really tough, you know, tough roles and bad guy roles. But even when he was playing like Ra's al Ghul, it shows that he can play that mentor that is willing to cross the line to accomplish his goals. And then as Qui-Gon Jinn, it shows that he can be a very caring mentor, a mentor that is willing to put aside the rules and to stay in line. He's willing to break away from that to help out somebody who is in need like Anakin, but in this case, like his fellow mutants who he feels are being oppressed, say like Pyro. I think this is a good pick. He looks the part, he feels the part. Let's jump ahead and take a look at some of these images. Some people have, uh, I don't think this is him right here, but this is just a toy. For example, when he was Ra's al Ghul, 
Take a look at this image. He has, you know, white hair in here. It looks like he's playing a politician. If you were to just extend that out a little bit down, down to kind of almost shoulder length, he could play a really nice Magneto. Even if you don't, look at this. The resemblance is uncanny. Uncanny being a pun for the X-Men. But also, take a look at this. Someone photoshopped the helmet on top of him. They changed the outfit. It's pretty cool. I mean, he does, he definitely looks the part. And in the helmet, he would look great. His voice has a lot of power behind it. He's got one of the most iconic voices in Hollywood right now. Um, and so I think that he would be a great, a great fit for that. And he's a fan favorite right now for the role. So let me know down below if you agree with that or if there's somebody else you would like to see play Magneto, Eric Lyncher. So let's uh, recap his height and, and stats. Liam Neeson is six foot four, the tallest on my list, but he's also 66, which makes him the second oldest on my list. So that's number four. Let's jump ahead to my fifth pick on my list. Number five, Jeremy Irons. A lot of people have been looking at him for some time now to play the role. 70 years of age makes him the oldest on my list. And six foot two makes him the s tied for the second tallest, along with Jim Caviezel. He voiced Scar in The Lion King. He was in Die Hard. Um, he was in Aragon, the dragon film. Jeremy Irons was also in uh, Justice League um, as Alfred. Now, a lot of people have been speculating whether or not Ben Affleck is going to get recast. And if he does, are they going to do away with the whole lineup that they've done for Batman so far or just Ben Affleck? Now, the odds are that if they're going to get rid of Ben Affleck, they're going to reboot. Right, And so if they do that, Jeremy Irons is probably not going to be Alfred anymore, which means he'll be free to join Marvel. And so if that happens, I would love to see Jeremy Irons uh, jump in there and play Magneto. He certainly knows how to play a villain. Uh, knocked it out of the park with Scar. I'm shocked they didn't bring him back for this new upcoming um, CGI Lion King. He was in Red Sparrow, Kingdom of Heaven, Assassin's Creed. He's no stranger to sci-fi or fiction. I think this is going to be a, a really fun choice. Also, he has one of the most iconic voices in the game. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look. Some people have done some side-by-side -side comparisons. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is him, obviously. He rocks that hair coming back already. He already looks the part. If you were to just shave the facial hair, you'd have him right there, ready to go. Um, you know, this face, just imagine that helmet right on top. You know what I mean? Um, this right here, that's too small for you guys. I wanna see if I can get a better one. But this one shows him right here. Someone, I think, put a cape on him or maybe that was already part of that. It looks kind of Photoshopped. And then this right here is Sir Ian McKellen um, in the helmet next to him. Pretty close, I would say, visually. And uh, you know, he's uh, he's six foot two. So he's he's pretty tall in stature, he's up there. Um, he would look really great standing next to a, a whole other lineup of mutants who have joined the Brotherhood that are probably six foot or a little bit under. He would have that stature, plus the helmet would add maybe like another inch. Um, and so you could really play with the height factor there. I think that would be really cool to have him in there. Um, and also being very close, close in age, but older, a little bit older than most of the picks for my Professor X, I think that would work very nicely. That right there is my fifth pick, Jeremy Irons. And then if you haven't heard his voice, YouTube it. He does insane, insane vocal work and his voice is incredibly powerful, incredibly commanding. And I think that that would be even more so than the visual connection, the vi like the visual representation, and even more so than even his stature or acting ability, his vocal acting, his voice, um, would be probably one of the most compelling aspects of his performance maybe even more so than Ian McKellen. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that down below if you like number five. Um, so then that's my top five right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a couple of, a few bonuses, all right? So there's a few bonus picks that I have. I'm gonna jump straight into that so we don't waste too much time. Next up, Daniel Craig. So this one's on a lot of people's list. Now he's 50 years old, which is younger than most of my picks tied with Jim Caviezel for the youngest slot on my on my pick list for Magneto. But he does look older than Jim Caviezel does. And this is going to be really good. We all know, you know, 007, Casino Royale, Skyfall, Spectre, Quantum of Solace. Not that swag is important for Magneto, but to have someone with the kind of like charisma and just authority and he can just walk in a room and own it, you know what I mean? He is no stranger to action. He's no stranger to like even stunt work. A lot of the X-Men stuff would probably happen on like cables and you'd have, you know, 
uh, green screens, and there'd be a lot of action sequences with Magneto that I would want, but also just his ability to uh, speak and, and command the front of a camera, you know what I mean? He would be great for that as well. So I think that that would be really nice. Um, he was also, if you don't, if you haven't seen 007 or anything, you might remember him from like the Golden Compass, from Tomb Raider. Um, you probably know him from, he was also in The Adventures of Tintin, a lot of war films too, some romance, lots of romance. Anyway, uh, I, he's a bonus pick. He's five foot 10, like most of the people on my list, and he's 50 years old, which puts him about 10 years younger than the majority of my list. A lot of people have him picked. Let's take a look really quick. Boom. Look at that. So they just, they swapped him for Michael Fassbender and he is older than Fassbender. He looks really good having swapped that. You know, here's the first the first two and then you just swap him out right here. Boom. Just give him the, the white hair and you'll be good. It'll really age him if you if you gray or, or, or white out his hair. That would be really helpful for playing the role of Magneto. Not that you have to, because obviously they didn't do that uh, for the younger version of Magneto with uh, Michael Fassbender. But uh, I think it would be really helpful, at least for visual aesthetic. That's, that's my first bonus pick. And my next bonus pick is David Wenham. So he was recently in Iron Fist season one as Harold Meacham. So he played Harold Meacham. He's 53 years of age. Again, he's also in Lord of the Rings. I've gotten a lot of Lord of the Rings picks here. Uh, and, and he plays Faramir, the brother of Boromir, who Sean Bean played. Man, does this guy bring it. He really plays that, you know, that emotional baggage, emotional damage. But also we saw a very different performance in Iron Fist. So when he was in Iron Fist, we got a chance to see him play, um, you know, someone that's very manipulative, cunning. He has a way with words. He has a silver tongue. He can get people to join his cause. And that's going to be very important. He also very much looks the role. At five foot 10, he's again, very close in, in height. I didn't do this on purpose, but most of my picks just happen to be 5'10". I think that he would fit the bill for Magneto as well. You just have to gray out the hair. He did a very powerful role when he was in Iron Fist. One of my favorite parts of the first season of Iron Fist, which was a jumbled mess, but if they had just stuck to the Meacham storyline, and done you know a little bit with the hand but not gotten so jumbled and they kept flip-flopping back and forth between the primary antagonist of the story and that was very difficult to track with and i think a lot of people didn't connect very well but it wasn't on any part of this actor right here look they got him here for banshee i think that he would also uh be a very good choice for magneto and again uh david wenham being 53 years old is very young but um, you know, depending on my pick for Professor X, it could work very nicely. And if you saw him in um, Iron Fist, so this was him in Iron Fist. So he looks a little bit, a little bit older, a little more rugged. Some of the the smile lines and the forehead lines, the creases, that works perfectly for Magneto. And here's him at a much younger age playing Faramir. He was also in 300. He got jacked, j -j -j jacked for this role. Um, and he was a savage, he played the one-eyed guy. Uh, but man, he can really turn on the intensity when he needs to. This guy has some great range and I would love to see him explore that as Magneto if we're gonna go for a slightly younger pick. Um, so that's that's it for him. I'm, I'm gonna let, leave that there. You guys let me know down below what you guys think about um, David Wenham playing Magneto. Next up, um, these were a couple mentions that I had, so I'll just skim through them because I kind of already covered them in my Professor X video. Ralph Fiennes, 56 years old, five foot 11, one inch taller than some of these other guys, right in that pocket. 56 puts him really close to 60, but still younger, but he looks a little bit older. So he could play anywhere in that ballpark. Again, I think that he would. it would be really nice to give him an opportunity to play Professor X, but a lot of people have him picked to play Magneto. And I think that's you know something that a lot of you guys might connect with more than the Professor X pick, which is why he's in my bonus. He wasn't one of my primaries because I truly believe he would knock it out of the park going either way as Professor X or Magneto. Definitely got the chops to play a villain, but definitely has it in him, has that range to play um, a passionate, but also caring leader like Professor X. Someone that seeks um, coexistence more than dominance, and I think that would be um, very nice. Like even him sitting in this chair, it looks like it looks like an, a fantastic Professor X to me. Just put that, make this a wheel instead of the arm of a chair, and then you just you balled him out right there. That would be him. So either way, that would work for me. He's 5'11", 55 years old. Next up, 
the the fourth and final pick for my bonuses for Magneto. Again, he's just like this guy was on my pick for Professor X. Jason Isaacs. Man, does he look like the Professor X from X-Men Evolution. He's 55 years old, 5'11", and uh, most people have him playing Magneto. And if you take a look if, you know, at this Photoshop right here, you just put the helmet on him, he looks the part. And I think he's right in that pocket, again, just like Ralph Fiennes, 55 years of age, makes him close enough to anybody playing 60 or anybody playing 50 that you could have them be colleagues and, and lifelong friends and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. He also looks quite a bit like Michael Fassbender if you look at him this way. I think visually it would be a smooth transition and then in my opinion he fits the part for either Professor X or Magneto. He's right there but I mean he is one of the leading people. Like if you say I want someone to play a villain, most people's minds go to Jason Isaacs. And so, um, and he does, he plays tons and tons of villains. Um, he was a villain in Peter Pan. He was a villain in Patriot. He's got a massive resume, but I haven't seen all of his work. So I'm just trying to skim through. He was in Avatar, The Last Airbender, not the movie, the TV show. All of the Harry Potters, he played Draco Malfoy's father, if I'm not mistaken. He was also in Abduction, played a bad guy there. He was in Cars, Star Wars Rebels, he played villains. He plays villains all the time. Justice League Gods and, Gods and Monsters, he plays Lex Luthor. He's constantly, constantly playing bad guys. That, I think, is something that would be critically important if you were going to uh, look for somebody playing Magneto. But you also have to have the ability to dial it back and play someone that can be understanding, someone that can have people buy into your cause. So he has to be relatable on some level. He can't just be menacing and threatening. And so even though he does it perfectly, the menacing and the evil, uh, he has to be like Michael Fassbender and Ian McKellen where you can see that he does genuinely care about his people. I think that would be something I would want to see more of. Man, that was a fun list. I'm going to go ahead and recap my list for you guys so that you guys can see um, again or get one more feel for who I'm talking about, all right? Sean Bean is my first pick. Sean Bean is 59 years of age and he is 5'10". Vigo Mortensen, 60 years old and 5'11". Next up on the list is Jim Caviezel. 50 years old and six foot two. Fourth on the list, we have Liam Neeson, 66 years old and six foot four, being the tallest. He's also the second oldest person on my list. Jeremy Irons is number five on my list. He is six foot two and he is 70 years old. That is my top five. As for the first bonus pick, we have Daniel Craig at 50 years old and five foot 10 inches tall. Next up on the list, we have David Wenham, who is 53 years old and five foot 10. Ralph Fiennes, 56 years old and five foot 11. Let me know if you think he should be Professor X or Magneto. Honestly, I think he can go either way. Then finally on my bonus pick list, we have Jason Isaacs at 55 years of age and five foot 11. Again, just like Ralph Fiennes, I think Jason Isaacs could play either Professor X or Magneto and it's up to you guys. Let me know down below what you guys think in the comments, which of these guys do you think is your favorite? And then also, do you think that these are good picks for Magneto or who would you rather see these guys play? Um, would they be better off as Magneto or Professor X? Or is there someone else that you think they should play? Anyway, that's pretty much it for this list. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about my pick list and the bonus pick lists for the guys that crossed over on both lists. If you guys haven't seen those videos yet, go check them out. This video is number seven in my fan casting the X-Men in the MCU series. Um, and this pretty much wraps up all the characters that I listed in my pilot pitch. So let me know what you guys think about these picks. I'll make one more master list to go over all of the picks that I had and narrow it down to one final roster for each of the characters that I fan casted. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video. 
or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.